Wrong. And uh, welcome to Race and History Now, episode eight. I am Francis Savignan, the founder and CEO of ePartrade. I am with uh, Judy Keen this morning, the co-founder of ePartrade. Good morning, Judy. Oh, Judy, I think your sound is uh, uh, muted. There yes. we go. There Good morning, you. everyone. Good morning, Judy. How are you today? Good. Good. Okay, and uh, with us we have the great uh, Jeff Hammond, who is going to be hosting our, our webinar this morning. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day so far. Looking forward to uh, the next hour. Exactly. So we're going to have a special edition today. Uh, our good friends from uh, Racer have joined us, and we are going to have three sessions in uh, one episode. So the first hour uh, will be hosted by uh, Jeff Hammond. And uh, Judy, we're going to have some special people on that uh, uh, one hour, right? Yes, yes. So Mike here is uh, with Fitec Fuel Systems. And I've been with them since the beginning of when they launched the company. And I have never seen a company launch so quickly and build such a great reputation, in all honesty, from racers and hot rodders. Very good. So we're going to have uh, the first hour with uh, with Fitech, and we're going to be talking about social media, which is the first here. And then at 10 o'clock, we're going to have a special guest joining us, and I see is right here with us. Uh, Marshall Pritt. We're going to, uh, you know, join Marshall in Sebring. Good morning, Marshall. How are you? Ah, Marshall is on mute. Oh, uh, there you are. Sorry, I'm more of a Microsoft Teams guy than Zoom. Francis, my apologies. Oh, uh, don't don't worry, don't worry. But uh, thank you and welcome back, Marshall. Do you want to tell us uh, you're going to have a special guest at uh, uh, at one o'clock your time, ten o'clock our time? Yeah, we have the president of IMSA. So in terms of special, I think we're doing okay. As my cats knock over a box of old IMSA slides. Nonetheless, yeah, we're going to have John Doonan at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to do something a little bit different and fun with this visit, Francis. I'm going to ask a few questions, but I spoke with John last night and he said, hey, let's send out a call to IMSA fans for questions for him. So I'm going to do that right now on my Twitter handle, at Marshall Pruitt. And we're going to see what kind of good stuff they come up with. See if we can dig up any dirt or uh, just have some fun figuring out where IMSA is going in the future. Excellent. That's brilliant. The, talking about uh, questions, uh, all of you watching us right now, please use the chat button. The whole idea of those webinars and the whole idea of being live is, you know, to create an interactive community where you can, you know, ask questions and exchange with experts. And then uh, after Marshall ends his interview with John Doonan at 10.30, we're going to have something very special that our good friend Paul Fanner uh, organized. So we're going to give the 2021 uh, Gorshline Scholarship for Young Racers. The winner will be announced at 10.30 uh, with, of course, uh, John Gorshline, uh, the founder of the Gorshline Company, and a special host, uh, Bob Varsha, uh, you know, who is a famous broadcaster. So stay with us. Jeff Hammond, it's on you for the next hour. And then Marshall, we'll see you in about uh, 55 minutes or so. Thank, Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Well, thanks as always, uh, Francis and uh, Judy for uh, getting us into the, the morning. Uh, welcome Ken Johnson from Social Lab Media. I love your background you've got there. It's uh, very unique. Good to have you with us. And also, uh, Michael and uh, that Bryce right there. Yeah, that's Bryce that's right next it. to me. <laughs> All righty, gentlemen, uh, very excited about having you here today. And again, you're showing, uh, I think everybody that's watching, that you guys uh, are not one dimensional. You're not just uh, putting ads in newspapers and stuff. You're taking social media to a new level as far as your industry is concerned. And uh, you're willing to share some ideas. I, I think that's what I understand about how to how you've made it work for you. And so, uh, why don't you why don't you lead off, Mike, and uh, tell us what's going what's so, going on here? So we saw. Let's let's go back a couple of years. Um, we started our Instagram and Facebook accounts. Um, we actually had them when we started the company, but 
we just use the the share pictures and maybe do some tech support through the websites, right? Um, through those through those outlets. We thought, okay, well, there's messenger people can message in questions, we can answer it, and and it was a very basic format for us. Um, then you move down the road and you start seeing guys like Ken Johnson and the and the platform he's built, and you see how many followers he has and stuff like that. And you're like, man, what is this guy doing? And how's he using this out? outreach to people and, and how can we benefit the company this way? So we started digging a little bit more and then all of a sudden this COVID thing hit and show shut down. And that was my number one source of advertising for Fitech. We were a very hands-on company. We wanted to get out to the shows and, and ha- shake your hand and look at your car and and um, help people that, that avenue and show our product that way because it was one of the best ways to, you know, get your product out in front of people is physically do it. And uh, that got cut off. And we had a we had a source a new way of marketing a new way of advertising and we turned back and we looked back at Instagram and looked at Facebook and said you know what how do we combine these things how do how do we advance our company and it was gathering content and it was linking our website to these platforms Instagram Facebook so now you can go on to Instagram and do direct sales through Instagram that go right to our website which generate revenue. And to get to that platform, you have to follow guys like Ken Johnson. Um, they're trendsetters. They're, they're the guys that know the in and outs of this weird thing called social media because I still don't understand it. Um, and, I, and 90% of what I do is guessing, but um, I'm pretty good at guessing because I kind of watch what people do. And I'm like, okay, well, they're going right. I'm going to go right too, but I'm going to go a little harder right, you know, and uh, be a little louder or do a little bit more or uh, spend a little bit more time doing it. Um, and if you can follow a guy that, you know, picks up on like, for instance, Ken Johnson has a, a has a site called Classic Daily. Um, Ken, how many followers do you have on that? Uh, I think we're around 1.7 on, on Classics Daily. But uh, Mike, you hit it on the head like 12 months ago, uh, the world changed, right? 12 months ago, when COVID hit, the world changed for the whole industry. Uh, people didn't know what to do. It's, uh, you know, it was the traditional type of advertising or going to shows and events, going to the, you know, different events, uh, that stopped. And it stopped for a long time. It's still, you know, coming, coming, you know, uh, you're still, you're, you're barely getting the ability to go out there to, to events uh, now, but. Um, it's very media, limited. Yeah. With social media, you, you were able, that didn't stop. It just heightened. Right. So um, if you weren't on social already, um, it was a big learning curve for a lot of people. So, so with that being said, I mean, it was, you know, you do different types of advertising, right? With, for your brand, right? You, you, you can, you know, pay to do paid advertising on Facebook, Instagram, Google. Um, and that's, that's one thing, but being able to talk to your fans and your, or people that, that purchased your product or people that want to know, that's where social media and if you're not talking to your people. Obviously that's, that's brand so uh, the, the brands that are out there that have social media platforms and you know what i'll just spend my money here or i'll spend my money here and i won't pay attention they're gonna lose out big they're already losing out you know um and he's like yourself gain um gain steam um right so there's there's the big guys out there that are growing and gaining steam so uh and if you weren't on social media uh that's us yeah, yeah, it's 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 been a positive positive experience for us to push forward. I mean, we've even had the ability to hire a full time social media person. I mean, she she we we hired a, a lady named Crystal, and she's been phenomenal. She's tying all our social media into our website, and it's a full time job. I mean, I, and I'm not going to say it's something that you could just turn a switch on and it does it itself. Um, I was up at two thirty this morning posting and commenting on people's stuff. I mean, that's just, it's a, it's a full-time job and it's a 24 hour day job. But if you put the time in and you start learning from these guys that are experienced out there doing it, the rewards are phenomenal. I mean, ask Bryce, Bryce has watched this thing take off. Bryce was, yeah. Bryce was guarding this page from uh, day one. Yeah. I was I mean, the one that uh, initially this, uh, social media accounts were created and then I came in and nobody was touching them. So I was like, hey, I have an Instagram account. I'll take over. And I just started posting things just because it was kind of a, if we're active, it's something. And that kind of built steam. And then trying to figure out 
what was going on. I mean, I was always lost. So once we started figuring out how social media works, then we realized the worth of bringing someone in for it. And it's, it's just taken off. It's, it's been a great, a great tool for us now. Well, the thing is, I'm sitting here with a big smile on my face because I love what your company does as far as your products, number one. And I've watched enough stuff coming into the last couple of weeks to understand how YouTube has been a big you know, part of you want to get information and updated stuff. But the big smiles on it because I've been getting pummeled because I was strictly a Twitter guy. All right. But, you know, it was just simple. It was the kind of thing that I could do and I could understand. And I've got a friend of mine, Van Colley, who uh, was uh, uh, Daryl Walter's business manager for many years. You got to do this. You got to do this. So we've been working together and he's got me into Facebook and he's got me now on Instagram. And guys, I hear you. I hear you. And I feel Mike's pain because <laughs> I'm not good at it, but with his help, I've been able to, to start a Facebook page and, you know, I've not gone totally public, I'm, but I'm maxed out on my friends I can have, but I can promise you everything I've done in the last two to three months has been eye-opening, mind-boggling, and confusing. And, and I'm glad you're, you're bringing this up because all the things I think Ken has been able to do to maximize, and I want to make sure I back up here a minute and everybody hears this correctly. When you say 1.7, Ken, you're not talking about 1,700. You're talking about 1 1.7 million? Yeah, I mean, to total net network is, is probably around 5 million. Um, it, it was 10 million, but and then I was able to sell, you know, a couple, <laughs> a couple million off. And you, you consider <laughs> um, each of these pages is like digital real estate, right? So able to sell off a portion of our digital real estate uh, and, and, make and make yeah, money and make money you're telling yeah. me you're making money yeah. doing this make a couple bucks you know yeah so yeah. <laughs> all right all right i just i just want to make sure we don't go too fast here because again i'm slow and i want to make sure i'm, I'm writing some of this stuff down because putting it up here it kind of goes in one area and sometimes comes out the other so no that's that's phenomenal and it's totally phenomenal and you think about if, if the people are, are that are listening are, are hearing what you're saying, that your product is a, a more than just information. It's a, it's a valuable product. It's a valuable asset to your company and the way your company works. But also when you go back to FITEC, it has got to be the ability to get in front of people that you never thought could see it, I guess is what I'm trying to go with. Right, right. And, and, and just going back, that's not me alone. You know, I've got a partner. Her name is uh, Brittany Westhoff. And Brittany, she's amazing at, uh, you know, digital, basically buying and, and pretty much everything on the web. So we've got a solid team, you know, and obviously it takes a team to make anything. Um, and with that, you know, we're able to do a lot of stuff because when, when people say social media based, you, are you talking about or, or organic, you know, like you said, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, what are you, what are you talking about? Are you talking about I'm going and doing paid ads, you know, like I said, paid ads, right? By just doing org an organic um, are you talking about content. Are you talking about, there's so much behind social. Um, I mean, you know, I left YouTube out. That's a whole nother platform, right? That's a whole nother beast. Um, so, so, so social media, it's just, a, it's just a giant. You can't just wrap up and say, Hey, are you, it's big. It's like saying, Hey, are you, are you good at, uh, are you good at, Oh, racing is is massive. What what are you good at? I mean, there's there's so many different race you know series out there and race disciplines. And speaking of social and th thinking about advertising, Jeff, you, the photo behind me that was taken in taken in Johnson Valley at a an event called King of the Hammers. Yeah, did a photo video shoot there uh, for one of our. Um, I want to say that uh, Dave brings seventy thousand global and. Money on advertising. He's he basically that's a social media people found that in France or or Brazil or what built a car with YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or whatever it may be. Um, he didn't advertise those people, so 
again, just going back to social media and how or it can impact a company, you definitely need to utilize social media as best as you can. Yeah, okay, jump ball right here real quick. Anybody can answer the question. What does organic mean? I'm gonna let um, Ken answer that's, that. That's, <laughs> so, so organic is like non-paid, right? So okay. see, um, you'll see when you post something on Facebook or Instagram, as a boost to this post. That's, a, that's, a fruit. that's like almost like a, go, a, a slot machine, right? You you post you get a post organic organic and you're breaking up be, real bad. Sorry about that, guys. It's my it is pretty strong. BIOS, bro. <laughs> I can't say anything because the last time I was on her, I had the same problem. I had my, my stuff lock up too. Cause there again, uh, what we're trying to do here with this zoom stuff, it needs to be, you know, really high speed internet. Let's face it. And if you don't get it, you, you got issues. <laughs> oh, Ken, Ken's rocking Fios. I know, I know this guy doesn't slack on, uh, making sure he has the top of the line. Yeah. Connection. My back? Kind of, you're back. Is it, is it choppy still? It is. It isn't right now. It isn't right now. Yeah, that was weird. I don't know what happened. Sorry, guys. Hey, Back it now. happens to the worst of us. Right. That's why I say to me too. <laughs> so, so going back to answer your question on organic, right? That's organic is uh, uh, not paying for a post, not paying for engagement, uh, not paying for, uh, not paying. So, uh, say for instance, post on Instagram. Uh, there's a way to post and boost it, right? And pay to basically see more viewers. So organic is not paying. Okay. All right. I got you. Organic's <laughs> organic not is free. Yeah, that's free. <laughs> All right. So, Mike, you know, how important and, and how, did, how have you been able to take social media and push FITECH and, and make it to where it is paying off for your company. Again, last so, year, the whole world was turned upside down because you already pointed out, you can't go knock on somebody's door anymore and go walking in and sit down or take them to lunch or anything. It, and you've got to figure out a way <clears throat> to still, excuse me, to be able to do that, but not not do that. You follow me? So how, how have you guys made it work? How, how is that? And, and Bryce, have you come up with solutions and ideas to be ahead of the curve, uh, you know, with your competition? So it's it's a couple of things we've done. Um, and I, I got to kind of kudos to, to Ken here on um, him and four guys started this thing called the uh, quarantine, quarantine cruise. Um, and it's a big thing in California, which gives me the ability to take you know, one of our classic cars down there and be around 1500 other classic cars and grab some content. Um, and that leads into my second part is you have to have content. You have to gather content and you have to be able to share things that people are intrigued in. Um, us, our fuel injection, we're showing install videos. We're doing six days to six pack video. We're doing um, Tech Tuesday, which is every Tuesday we release new technical tips on our product, which has been engaging. And that's going across all platforms. Um, another big thing we're doing is on the content that we do release, and if it has a Phytech product there, in that product, you can actually click the product and go to our website and, and purchase that product if you wanted to, or get more information on it. Um, those are some of the things we're trying to tie together. Um, we're doing the direct contact with customers through our social media um, faster, I think uh, the instant messaging and, and things like that. And we're moving into a whole new, we have another phase coming up where we're going to probably move into a whole new phone system that ties into our um, website and that would bring into our social media. So now you can directly instant message us um, throughout the day and, and get complete tech support right away. Um, but yeah, I think the, the big push is know where to go get content, hook up with the right guys, Talk to guys like Ken Johnson so he can give you the inside tips. I mean, there's, I'll tell you what, Ken Johnson calls me randomly, just randomly will call me and say, hey, Mike, 
Mike, listen, tell your, uh, tell your social media person to, to type three words, no more emojis, respond in three words, you know, and then he'll hang up on me. And, you know, that was like the, that was like God speaking to you, you know, the gods from social media calling down to you and saying, here, here's a tip, you know, and you better get your ass up and go run over there until your social media person stop using emojis and use words and you better use at least three, you know, so <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's very, very important. So, so, okay. so let me jump in there and, and, yeah. and on the Mike's, uh, you know, comment, it's a, it's all about engaging, right? Say I have a company, right? And I, I'm Flytech, right? And I post content on my page and I don't respond back to them, right? We, back to any comments. That's almost like have, being at a house of a neighbor that drives by all the time and he, you wave, wave into him, right? Okay. And he don't wave to you, right? And he drives by and you, you're waving to him, right? Again, and, you know, again, man, what's going to happen? you know, when this, when basically, if, if you keep waving to the neighbor, right, and he don't wave back, you know what, I'm just going to stop waving. So, so going back to the person that's buying the product, right, that, that person is not going to, you know, or come back to your page anymore. And they're like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm posting, I'm trying to engage with Flight Tech, but they're not engaging back. Go ahead and go to, right, I'm gonna go to this brand, I'm gonna go to this brand. And, and again, it's all about engaging. And, the content just like mike said patrick keystone is a master at that right he basically collects a lot of content and content is important so content not just like you don't want to post stuff like oh it's 50 percent off sale you want to you know you, you've you you don't want to post a, a bunch of graphics you don't want to make a magazine right no pun intended on the magazines or anything like that because i love but you want to make your social media um relevant and informative or eye-catching, right? Great content. Because if you if you don't have great content, you, the guys aren't going to come back to your page or, or the girls aren't going to come back to your page and look at the content on your page, you know? So again, you got to have appealing content for people um, and you got to feed the people or great I think right now the, uh, the like I say, Van keeps telling me, you know, you got to feed the beast. You know, you got you got to continually feed the beast. And we, and you and what you're touching on there, Ken, and and again, Michael Bryce, if how often is this a daily? Is it an hourly? You know, what where is the, where is the uh, the edge that you feel like you need to be at to be where the people will find you? I mean, you give somebody too much, I mean, you give it too much candy. Uh, you know, is it, is it going to get sick on the stomach of you? I mean, how, how, how do you differentiate and how do you quantify the right amount of information to be putting out there? My, my opinion is at least one time a day. It's like, it's like a feeding, a, it depends. Like, again, are you, are you trying to be a bodybuilder? Right. So, Hey, you know, you're a bodybuilder, you're getting fed all the day. Right. If you survive, um, and you don't have the back to time management if you have time, then one time a day, probably the minimum, right? When you wake up in the morning or when you, before you go to bed, that'd be like the absolute bare minimum of what you should do. And I wouldn't even recommend that, but if that's all the time you have, then do that. Yes. Yeah, so for us, we, uh, we have a schedule. Uh, so we have a morning post that we do, um, Anything that pops up, anybody tags us, we'll share it throughout the, the time. And I think that's important. You always pay your homage to people that are, are posting your stuff. Um, and then we have a evening one and we try to find the times that people are most engaged on our sites. Mm -hmm. So we look at the numbers and say um, 3.30, between 3.30 and 5.30 is our hot time, right? That's when people are in our, our, our age group, our bracket that we're targeting is on that's when we're going to drop something mm -hmm. um, or we're going to do a live or for instance, like Ken does a bunch of uh, um, lives and, and we'll try to join those and, and get involved and comment on those because people are following what we're doing. So um, I, yeah, you got to be active um, for us. It's three posts a day right now, yeah. uh, minimum. So, so Bryce, you know, it, it, as I read and you mentioned, you, you were kind of like in charge of this part of, the, of your company because you had Instagram. So what made you realize that you needed to go bigger? And, and now, you, like I say, you guys are, it sounds to me like you got a full staff 
that's taking care of, of your social media? Uh, the big, the biggest thing with that is, is it kind of started, I mean, it's funny to say as a hobby, it was just something to do. And then it kind of turned to where we started getting other companies trying to interact with us. And I'm going over to Mike and going, hey, look, this company wants to work with us. And then all of a sudden we're getting Ken Johnson jumping in into these groups. And there's a whole background community of a bunch of different companies working together to try to boost each other's posts. And I'm sitting there going, wow, this is so much more than what I initially thought it was. It's so much more of a sales thing. It's so much more of a support thing. I always looked at it as more of support. Hey, I'm on there. I posted a photo. You know I'm active. Ask your question. I'll reply. But I never looked at it as the sales side. The moment you look at it, the sales side, it's so much bigger. There's so much support. And then once you realize the whole interaction required, it's so much more than one person to do alone. It really takes a team. Yeah, I I don't know if you know that like Phytech is a super small staffed company. Um, I like in this office here, I think I have as far as let's say upper office, upper management, there's six of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in my warehouse, I have eight or nine guys. And then I have eight techs in El Paso. Um, so we're a super small company that are fighting the big dogs, right? Um, so when social media was going on and we started realizing how important it was, it was like, all right, so I got to sign into our Instagram. And then it was like, whoever can reply, whoever can post, just do it, just do it. Just, and it was very almost chaotic, I would say, because, <laughs> it's simple. because on top of having to do your normal job every day, then you're trying to take on this new part of the, the company. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of us already wear three or four different hats. So when you start doing that, you start realizing like, man, we got to get this thing under control. And that's when it was like, all right. I don't like where our website was going and we need somebody social media. So I was like, we're going to post a job and we're going to interview as many people as we have to. And we got to find somebody that can manage our website and manage our social media. And the, I think the second interview that came in the door, um, she came in super organized with the best resume, grabbed her resume, felt her resume and said, this is by the one. <laughs> <laughs> and then interviewed her and she turned out being phenomenal full of energy willing to learn and this is a whole new automotive is a whole new thing for her like she's never been in automotive before and and she's learning parts she's learning learning cars and she's she's going up to the guys like ken johnson and patrick and just asking them questions like not letting them not answer her you know and <laughs> and that's what we needed so we found somebody very strong to help us um and we're still involved too like i'm not not going away. Um, I'm, I'm on there busting people's chops a lot and messing around. Um, <laughs> Bryce is doing the same thing when he gets in, he, ha he handles almost all the technical all the uh, questions stuff. that come and which is yeah. why I brought Bryce here anyways, is, is I know we need to answer some tech questions. Um, and we can lead into that whenever you want, but that's why Bryce is here because Bryce is a fight tech tech guru. I mean, the guy was here when the book was written and can still almost fix anybody's problem that's out there. Um, if he can't fix it, goes to one other guy and this guy that created Fitech. So um, that's why he's here. Uh, so he had the start of Fitech. So paying homage to the Bryce, and I figured he needed to get on here and show his face. Plus, I don't know if you've been watching our Tech Tuesdays. Yeah, I'm the guy. Now. Um, he gets to do it because I don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, under, I understand part. Like I say, I watched him several times on the uh, on YouTube too. So I, I see the the natural ability that he has. But real quick, guys, I mean, like I'm getting started here on this Instagram account. And, and Ken, please <laughs> tell me, how do you make it better and keep it personal and not let it wind up? Be, like like Michael was saying, I don't I don't have somebody working for me right now. I got a friend of mine that's helping me. And I think right now he's probably listening. I'm going to probably get a, a, a tweet or some kind of message here in a minute about, you know, you, I've been telling you, you need to hire me because – it's thing is growing so, so fast. And it's, it's blowing my mind, the numbers that can happen all of a sudden, you know, you put a, put something out and like I say, I'm new on Instagram, but I'm seeing it on the Facebook and even on Twitter. Um, you do something that people are interested in. They start realizing you're talking to them. The numbers jump, it jumped for me, you know, exponentially. I mean, from 50 or 60, now we're up, you know, 1500, 4,000 and we're seeing numbers that, that, you know, that blow my mind. Uh, is there, is there a, 
a way to move through this that you would recommend? Are you guys, you know, like I say, can I call up Social Lab and talk to Ken Johnson about something if I stump my head of, of, or toe or whatever? How how do you get how do you get into? I guess you might say into the into the the fold or in the loop. Um, I mean, it's real simple, man. You know, I, yeah, definitely. You can call me any, and uh, I will be able to you know guide you, direct you, help you uh, in any way. So yeah, thank you for for that. You know, my contact is really easy. You go to Instagram and you look for Ken. Um, you just go to at Ken, and that's how you go. So um, it's a, it's you know, I made it really easy. That's my that's my calling card or my business card. Um, if you yeah, you could just send me a DM to say hey, you know, I seen the show. I seen you talking to Fight Tech Mike Bryce and uh, and you know and and the guys over there and uh, yeah, and send me a DM. So. Um, yeah, let me know, Jeff, as far as, uh, after the show, uh, Mike has all my information, uh, and, you know, my email is real simple. It's just Ken at social lab, uh, uh, social lab media.com. So yeah, guys, it's a dollar per word and you make the check out to me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pay so, for a hot rod, dude. It's <laughs> tough so, out there. Uh, going back though, Jeff on, on growth, one thing I always recommend is great content number one great content um be be real be original um and engage don't don't put content out there and then just expect a whole bunch of comments to come and then not respond to them respond back to them with the genuine you know you know chat don't just don't give someone a thumbs up don't, if someone says hey man i love your car and then you give them a thumbs up or a peace sign don't do that just Respond back, hey, go to their profile, check them out and see what they have. Hey, I love your, you know, Toyota Corolla things awesome or whatever it may be. Or, man, I see you like motocross. That's really cool. You know, um, who's your favorite rider? Again, just engage with the people. Um, and again, just like I said, uh, put out valuable information. Um, you're already doing that now. I love that you guys are putting the show on because, again, you guys are educating people. We're here to give free education same with Mike and Bryce, right? Free education is important to the industry. Uh, you know, prior to me doing this, I, I was over at Lucas Oil and I was a marketing director for the Lucas Oil Off-Road Racing Series. And with that, you know, it's always about educating the racers on how to, whether get sponsorships or or how to, you know, build their social. So, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing. All right, well, we've got something here that, you know, Rich wants to know, do you have any tips for, for converting social media audience to website signups and purchases? I, I got I got one answer on that. If I could touch one on that one, link your product to the images that you're posting. Okay. So if you link your link your main web website to the to the post that you're doing, um, and make sure it goes to the product that you're talking about. So it, don't have it, don't click it and it goes to like you're, you're showing a dog and it, and it links to a cat. Don't do that. Make sure it links to the right product. Right. Yeah. I agree with Mike. Make sure, and this is, he's talking about Instagram on its store feature. Uh, you know, click on the, click on the, uh, whatever makes tires and then it takes you directly to the stores or, or fuel injection or whatever part you have to sell. You click on it, it'll take you to the store and you're able to buy it directly. And we have that set up with a bunch of clients. And if you can't do it, you know, they're going to help you with that. So uh, again, uh, going back, I seen someone ask what DM was. DM is a direct message. And that's on Instagram that you could just DM somebody. So direct message somebody. Um, and that's just like, a, you know, basically short code. What about when you when you mentioned that right there on Instagram? How important is using hashtags as far as something on, on that deal? Yeah, we had, yeah. A, so, we had a call so this morning on that. Hash, hashtags are hashtags are massive now, you know. And okay. and again, it's utilizing the right hashtags and the, the right amount of hashtags. Um, it's funny because Mike Mike knows uh, our our buddy Patrick. You know, he's basically a hashtag specialist, right? And we call we call it the hashtag package, right? It's like a, a package that. It, 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 some bears. Hashtag that are used specifically for whatever are that is your make model right and mm -hmm. that um with the hashtags opened up the ability for a photo or content to be seen by people who follow you so that's what's important on utilizing hashtags 
is it gives the it gives the people that don't follow you the ability to content. Okay. Well, Crystal wants to know, and, and I think it's a very valid question because you know it started out with Twitter and Facebook and then it starts expanding and expanding and expanding. What's the new product that we got to be looking out for? Is there something coming down the pipe right now that is going to once again change how we perceive or add to the social media that we're so used to already? I can tell you some new fuel injection products that are coming out <laughs> that are going to blow your mind, but uh, uh, new social media tools that are coming out. Um, um, I've been uh, messing around with TikTok to see what's in there and it's starting, the, the racing community is starting to kind of flourish in there. Um, I don't really understand how if the algorithms or anything work on it, but it's it's getting some traction. Where um, with Instagram, you got the reels, which is kind of like TikTok. And for some reason, sometimes you post something and they just take off. And then all of a sudden you got 100,000 people seeing it. It's, um, it's really interesting. And it's something that I think that needs to be explored some more, but we are kind of well, the, the reels, the waters. yeah, like reels on Instagram, that's been taking off for us pretty well. Um, little short videos and uh, just like we, we show this video of our uh, angular discharge out of our throttle bodies. And it's just a, a top view of the throttle body. And it shows how our fuel is ejected into the motor. And that thing is, is like Instagram gold. I mean, it, it's insane <laughs> how many people just look at that. It must be hypnotizing. It, it's got it's got something you got a loud motor noise and fuel going in it so i guess it must be uh somewhat hypnotizing but stuff like that um i'm see, glad uh, you mentioned that because i was watching that earlier this morning when i was getting ready for the days i was going down through there and i saw that and i looked in there and i said now that is a cool way to get people to understand what you're talking about when you're trying to atomize the, the fuel and get it you know broke up and, and, and i mean Nobody was doing any talking because you couldn't hear, but you, the way you had the captions <laughs> underneath, I mean, it was like, dang, this is a cool way to get people to understand what a throttle body really does. It's, it's definitely, it's one thing to try to explain it, and then it's a whole nother thing seeing it. So, yeah, yeah. Great visual. Great visual. I, you know, about, I, I'm going to say about a thousand of those views are just me. <laughs> I, I get stuck on it. I just watch it over and over and over again, but huh? hey, ratings are ratings, right? <laughs> they are. That's true. That's true. Well, Ken, he, uh, Bryce brought this up, but uh, what about TikTok? Is TikTok, you know, part of the uh, the uh, arsenal that you you know you put together with your? I mean, I guess that's where I'm coming to. Is we can talk about fifty different things. What are the bread and butter platforms that you want to be on? You've got to be on. It was cutting out. So I thought you said, what are the bread and butter uh, platforms, right? Correct. That's what we want to know. So, and it depends on, on your brand, right? I, YouTube. Um, I really like YouTube. Um, I think you can really, your bread winners, if you want to basically, uh, you know, you can tie directly to your website. Same, same, you can tie to a store. Uh, Instagram, those are those are the three, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and and YouTube, TikTok. I feel like that's a more of a marketing, you know, program to be able to build your brand or you know build brand equity, or get some it's a marketing free brand. So there's so many so many uh, outlets that you can go. It's it's all in time. How much time or how much money do you have? Like, do you have a lot of money to spend and have someone that can manage all the platforms um you know again how many kids do you have you want 10 kids or do you want kids? what can you afford right um and talking about kids it's again babies right and each baby if you don't feed you at that social platform it's just going to die so whatever you can whatever you have time for is is what you okay you guys uh have been talking about your know, instagram a lot and uh facebook a lot you never mentioned Twitter. Is is that not uh, is that taboo, or just is that is that just kind of like a weak no. sister as far as social media? You know, I mean, I, I, we don't have a lot of clients that that utilize Twitter, uh, so 
I mean, I everyone's know my different. Sign right? in. So I, I think with Twitter, I feel like an informational platform for people, right? People are getting quick info, immediate news or immediate info. So, uh, I'm not sure if that is the best platform for sales. Okay. But, but they're all good. I mean, everybody, you know, has their, their choice, right? Oh, yeah, they have choices. I mean, that's the thing right now is that I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about, you know, what we're in versus what we might need to be in. Uh, another question we got coming from, from Rich, and he wants to know what's the best type of content that you would recommend, photos or videos or text, or does it kind of depend upon the, the industry? You know, in my opinion, videos, they're, they're the hardest to create, right? They take the most time and money to create video content, great video content. Um, I think that's the best. Uh, photos, obviously, uh, are good, but videos, you're, you're able to explain the product. So I would say videos, in my opinion. I 100% not going to argue with Ken. <laughs> okay, well, well, Mike, when we go back and, and look at your industry, your business in particular, um, have you put effort into cameras or anything like that to try to make your social media presentations uh, better? Oh, yes. or, or just do you do everything? I mean, I'm sure you don't do everything off a of phone, do you? No, I mean, I do personally. Yeah, we did start off of phones, by the way. And don't ever diss an iPhone or a Droid, as I'm going to tell you, Ken. Uh, the camera quality on the Droid is phenomenal. Um, You're probably the only person on this on this feed right now that has a Droid, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because of the quality of the camera, you guys can't handle it. Um, <laughs> we're, we were talking smack back and forth this morning on, on iPhone versus it, Droid. It, so. I, I knew there was something behind the story behind the story. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love using my Galaxy. I cannot, I, my whole family, even all my kids all have iPhones and I just can't, I don't, I don't get it, man. <laughs> the fact that you want to go on the internet and you got to hit a button that says Safari just does not make sense to me. Um, so iPhone left a long time ago in my life. And I, I'm droid for life, unfortunately. Um, you and Colin. Colin Andrews. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. <laughs> one guy me on too. here says, me too. Oh, <laughs> so there is one more out there. But um, no, we have invested uh, uh, money into better equipment. Um, we're, yeah. we're, we're exploring more droids now. Our, um, we're doing everything from uh, GoPros. Strapping GoPros onto cars is an easy way to get filler content. Uh -huh. um, a good camera and and a microphone is a huge thing. That has taken our uh, Tech Tuesdays, for example, absolutely to the next level. Um, a big thing that a lot of people overlook, especially when trying to do stuff inside, is lighting. We have a whole lighting setup so we can get better lighting so you could see things better. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things when you're talking about audio or uh, video equipment that people don't realize. Lighting is so much of trying to portray something. So it's, we've upped our game a lot with, with all types of audio equipment, video equipment, lighting, even, I mean, we're talking about trying to set up a, a set now, like a little studio where we could film in. Yeah, and, and don't ever, don't ever just send it. Don't ever just take a video and just send it. Go back, review your video, make some changes if you have to, polish it a little bit, spend some time on it because you'll see the difference between a video that you just sent to one that is clean. Um, and you can hear the person talk and you get your point across. Um, so make sure you invest the time in what you're producing because Jeff, that you're selling it. And, and, and Jeff, there's a place for like iPhones, right? Or phones, right? Galaxies or iPhones, right? Either or um, there's a place for that. And and like, let's go ahead and say Keystone. I, I bring it back again, Patrick at Keystone. His whole social platform, every every photo, every video is from his iPhone, right? And I want to say he even has an iPhone 8 and he sees, you know, millions upon millions of views, right? And so uh, monthly. So with that, there's a place for that an iPhone or Droid or a smartphone, and there's a place for high-end video and photography. So you, you got to have both. And it, again, it goes to the budget. What's your budget, right? So. Galaxy uh, S9. Is that? Galaxy S9. Yeah. Yeah, baby, that's, 
You know what? There's a good shot. You, you tie it, here. You zip tie it to your uh, tire. If you zip tie it to the outside of your tire, and you'll get a good shot and when you're burning look at, out. Look at the thickness of that phone, baby. <laughs> they just don't make them like this anymore. It's like a freaking brick right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all the good content in it. That's why it's just swollen. Well, right now we're starting to get a lot of questions coming in, and, and, and we've got one from Colin Andrews, and they would like to know, uh, if you had only one camera to buy, and not a Galaxy, we're talking about a camera, okay? What would you buy, especially for a YouTube-type application? For, for cameras? Yeah. Or for, again, it just goes back to, to budget. Um, a phone is fine. A Galaxy is fine. A, you know, a, basically, an a iPhone is fine. But, you know, I've got a Sony um, A7 III, and that's, you know, that's what we use. And a couple of you use the, the same same camera. I'm sure, you know, you can grab a, a Canon as well. And there's just so many different uh, options out there. And it just depends on the budget. Yeah, we have an A7 as well. A, Yes. And are those all that's Canon my choice. products? My choice. Uh, Sony. So Sony, Sony, Sony A7 III is, is, is what I have. And I believe Mike has the same thing. So yep. the quality is great. The photo and the video is, is great. But there's many options. You don't have to start off with that. You can start off with something lower end as well uh, to, to create. So I would recommend starting off lower end and then building, right? And just, just try and buy something that's a... Uh, possibly used if you're going to start off and just learn how to utilize a camera, you know, edit, you don't need to buy a $5,000 camera to start off. It's not going to help you. Okay, Alexa, we have return, Alexa, return that camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, I think, Ken, you're trying to tell them, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> oh, man. Um, there you go. There you we, go. Still got more questions coming in about, you know, the different platforms and uh, uh, how about Lincoln? You know, how does it fit in? Is it more for business connections and networking than, you know, ba basically is it still, once again, it's just one of those add-ons to your social platform that you have to, you, you need to have. Is that, is that so, fair to say? I'm probably the worst manager in history because I don't use Twitter. I don't use LinkedIn and I don't have a TikTok account because I can't figure out how to sign in. Um, so LinkedIn is just a, a, is like a giant business card, giant Rolodex. So I think right. that's a, that's probably a positive thing to have. I just don't have time between trying to keep that up and then do the Instagram, which has been more successful for me as, as in the industry I'm in. Um, Instagram and Facebook has just been the, the money makers for me. I would, I'll straight out say that. That's where, that's where I see my money and that's it. So let's, let's face it, like in today's world, right? Let's go yeah. ahead and say, um, you know, you know, Jeff, I think you're probably a couple of years older than me. Um, so let's bring it back 25 years, right? <laughs> let's bring it 25 years. The, the world seemed like it was a big place, right? It, I felt like the world was a lot, a lot bigger 25 years ago, even even 35 years ago, the world was a big place. Hey, on LinkedIn, if you wanted to connect B2B with the company, you don't need to fly anywhere. You don't need to fly. You can. We're doing it now. Um, I can still right now, and we could be doing this, right? Uh -huh. Or discussing stuff. We can chat with people in China. We can chat with people in, in you know, Japan or where, wherever, or Australia. And so um, the world is a smaller place. And again, I feel with the you know the, the LinkedIn is it's a great platform for B2B or even building future uh, relationships. You know, I, I'm not going to take exception to the to my age because I will admit to you right quick, I go all the way back. I had one of the original bag phones. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have cameras in it. We just we just were able to talk from our cars and we thought we, that was uh, the greatest thing since James Bond. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, so how 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 and, and you seen it right? The world was shrinking. The world it was, was shrinking, right. So yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, a funny story was when I was growing up as a kid, my dad would always say, "Hey, if you got a quarter in your pocket," and it's like when he first asked me that, I said, "Why? I want to make sure if you got to make a call, I don't want to hear you say you didn't have." money in your pocket to be able to go to a pay phone and call the house and tell me you're not going to be home 12 o'clock. So, you know, when the, the bag phone came along, you know, fortunately I was already out of the house, but you know, I still could say if I was coming in late, I could let my parents know because I still lived in, at home at that period of time. So it, to me, yes, the world has changed radically. 
in, in the last, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And it's changing daily. I think that's the reason why I think this is so fascinating because we're still getting people asking questions about, you know, here's something I never heard of. Does anyone still use TweetDeck? I, 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 again, that's way above my pay grade and my knowledge, but it sounds like everything on a daily basis. Where, is there any suggestion from you two gentlemen or you three gentlemen that people can go to and look up some of this information? Is, is there a site? Is there an app that we that maybe I, would educate people because both of I you sound Johnson. like you've had to hire people to get caught up from what you don't know. Yeah, if if you're a business, hire Ken Johnson. Go to his, go go hire him. Um, he'll guide you the right way. And that's that's just what I've seen him do with other companies. We mm -hmm. don't employ Ken, um, and and Ken is that cool of a guy that actually shares his knowledge with us and 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 tries to help us along the way um, when we make mistakes. He he's the first one. They don't do it that way. Do it this way, and and we take notes with them. But if, if you're not able to do this and you don't understand it and you can't put a team together to do it for you, yeah. hire Ken. Yeah, thank you guys. Well, stop shopping it. right there. And and again, I, I agree. What I've heard out, come out of him today has been very informative. Uh, here's one other good question that uh, Matt Ross wanted to know. How many times a day should you reply to a tech question or, that has been submitted or Facebook on Instagram or anything like that? Is there any, you know, that, that's continuation a, that's a, or rollover that's a fight tech question right there um and i'm gonna let bryce answer that one um and then i'll i'll add on at the end because so this one kind of goes on multiple levels um at first it kind of went hey i'm next to my social media person they throw a piece of paper at me and say get on or we may be passing and it's like hey someone asked this how do i respond and it's immediate as soon as you get it you want to respond to it sooner um, not to jump back to this Android or uh, iPhone thing, but we're all wearing smartwatches now. So we're getting notifications <laughs> right on the dot. And it's like, hey, you need to go do this. And I mean, Ken kind of touched on it earlier. It's, it's a baby. You got to be tentative to it and just be right with the people. And the cool thing about social media too, is now that someone's using off of their phone most of the time, if there's a tech question, hey, show me. They could take a picture and direct message. That gives a better idea on some of the tech stuff. Or if we do need to move it to email, you just tell them to email us. So you can pull people out of the platform or you can just communicate straight in the platform. But it's a matter of just get, being tentative to it. Yeah, so, and I'm gonna add on to that. So. On our, our platforms, we're eight to five uh, Pacific Standard Time. So if you send a message in um, and it's at midnight, odds are you're not gonna get a reply, <laughs> but there's a good chance I will reply to you. So it's, it's kind of, <laughs> so if I'm up and I'm not doing anything, um, we'll jump on there in, in the odd times. If we're traveling, we're on a plane, we'll get on there. We'll all, we all chip in um, 24 seven, but ideally it's eight to five Pacific Standard Time. Okay, since, since we're talking about your active deal, and Ken, please jump in here, because like I say, you work with a lot more companies. Social media, as far as your business, Mike, and Ken, if you know another business you would like to say that you helped that has made a, how much, if you could have put a, a percentage, how much have you grown maybe because of your social media effort? You know, in the last, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say just the last year, but maybe, let's use maybe two years. Last two years, how much have you grown? On our side, well, uh, let's just take a small fraction of our company, and I'll, I'll give you a small percentage. Um, just on uh, our our direct contact to our website. So, say our linking from Facebook, Instagram to our website is up 18. percent Up 18. Mm percent. -hmm. Let me give you a number. Let me give you a number. Um, a client that we helped, they did exhaust. Um, and it was another industry. It wasn't the, it wasn't the, it was a, basically the motorcycle industry. They, on Black Friday, okay, for Black Friday, their sales, they did 30% of their annual sales in seven days. What? Yeah. 30%. 30% 30 of their annual sales in seven days. Wow. Black Friday. And so just to give you an idea, and this is 100% through social media, 
This is through selling on Facebook and Instagram. And it's, and it's, it's a pretty large number. So just to give you an idea of, of what people do. And it, again, it goes back. And I love what, um, what Mike, Mike is doing, right? He's building a community. Um, and, you know, and I know they're your competitors, but it, it's, it's another thing. Like, so Holly, they do LS Fest, right? It's a whole deal, right? So um, the good guys, right? You guys sponsor the good guys. And you're building community in that 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 bond with the people sponsoring that. So Fight Tech, you guys sponsor good guys. Um, you guys are coming out to the quarantine cruise and being a part of the community. And then on top of that, then being on you know communal on social media, chatting with the people, and that's massive. So being able to communicate with the people, not only but um, online, is super important. Yeah, it shows it shows that you're human. Like that's, that's one thing a lot of people miss and, and don't connect is they don't show that there's a human aspect to the business. So, you know, it's not just Phytech. There's no, it's not just Phytech. It's there's Phytech Mike, there's Phytech Bryce, there's our tech team. They're humans. There's people that, that, that are passionate about what they do and they love this industry. And, and that's the part that you have to bring out to bring people in. So if you, if you can open yourself up and, and expose your customer base to who you really are and which really drives you and what your company is about, um, you're going to succeed. You're going to, you're going to be successful in this, this industry. If you don't, if you're a closed door and you're just, you know, cold to people, you don't respond, you don't, you don't want to reach out. You don't want to be involved in social media or out in the shows. You're going to fail. Well, it sounds like to me, and I think everyone on the screen, anybody out there listening has run into this. You call into some place to get an answer. And all you get is push one, and all of a sudden you got an automated robot answering your call. Please tell us what you want. If you can't tell us what you want, then you push don't get two. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like it put pushing you down the line, and you're not getting where you want to get, and you want answers. And yep. in any industry you're in, you didn't call to get an answer because you got you know, half a day or next week to get that information. You need it now for a purpose. So Jeff, I want to be absolutely honest with you. Our tech support and our customer service sucked two and a half years ago. Absolutely the worst in the industry. By far, you couldn't get a hold of us. You couldn't, you'd have to wait on hold an hour and a half to get a tech on the phone. And a lot of that's to, to due to because we grew so fast and it was, you know, um, Try to put a tech on a phone, a guy that knows every make, model, every engine, and can troubleshoot over the phone to fix your car. Try to put him behind a desk. That guy's out there working on cars, man. He's not trying to be behind a desk. So to build a really good tech team is hard to do. Um, but now we're probably 10 times better than we were. Um, social media has taken a big burden off of our phone lines to where we can we can answer with the tech videos. We can... You can go back and, and talk to us online. You can you can personally reach out to me on my own page, his own page, and we'll answer those tech questions for you. Um, our, our WDs, which are warehouse distributors, they call us personally now. I mean, there's a lot of things we did using the social media platform to, to take a lot of that burden off of us, to take a lot of that weight off. So there's not an hour and a half phone line wait. Um, there's, you know, you got eight texts at Anderson phone. You got a guy that's instant doing the instant messages. I mean, it's just, we, we have the avenue and we have the support now to take care of people. Mm -hmm. And social media is a huge part of that. Yeah. Well, there might be a good place to start trying to wrap this thing up because see, Francis just came back on and we've got, uh, you know, coming up here at 10 o'clock, we've got more from uh, Marshall Pruitt from that 12 Hours of Sebring followed by uh, Bob Varsha and their award. So gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. It's been fun and very, very informative. And I really appreciate you guys uh, hosting this today and answering the questions and sharing your success, as well as not only the fact, Ken, that, you know, everybody's looking at you saying he's the guru. So if you want to, you know, get it right, look up and call Ken Johnson at Social Lab Media. He'll put you on the right path and to hear the success. And also following you guys at Fitech, Mike, uh, you got great products. You're, you know, you're, you're stick, sticking tried and true and basically moving the automotive industry out of carburetors into fuel injection and doing a whale of a job of it. So uh, congratulations. And again, I'm going to turn this over to Francie. It's been Thank a lot of fun. Uh, this uh, 
webinar this time, Francis. So I, hopefully we got something good out of it. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, Mike. thank you so much.